Hi, Elena. Welcome to the podcast. Well, Krista, I'm always happy to be on with you. I love it. So Me thank too. You. Me too. Yeah. I'm so excited to have you back. I, I w- actually went back and listened to our first interview together and it feels oh. like a lifetime ago. It was early 2022 and so much has changed, I think as well. So for, everybody. Will you get, for everyone, will you give the audience just an update about like what you're doing, what's new with you, yeah. kind of just a quick, quick rundown of everything. Uh, sure. later. Well, um, first of all, let them all know that I'm a mystic. Uh, which means I see beyond the veil all the time. I live between two worlds. That's kind of my whole thing. So I get to see a lot of things and I see the higher perspective of almost everything. Mm. And I don't have that fear that everyone has, which is nice. I wrote a book called Hello Soul, which is out now. It's on Amazon. It's pretty good. It's how did I do this? How did I get where I am? Right. And also gives exercises. But I Really, um, for those who want to live in a place like where I live and have that wonderful place of, of being above the trees instead of in the jungle fighting for your life, um, I have these courses and they're very affordable. Yay. Isn't that nice? Uh, I have Hello Soul Ascension 1 and 2 and 3. And each one will get you in line with living with your highest consciousness, your soul. And that's where I live. So, yeah. So that's what I do. And that's the newest thing. And, yeah, take a look at it, you know, for people who really want to ascend. We need to, Krista. It is Mm -hmm. time. You know, if you're not ascending, if you're not constantly getting to that place, then you're tossed around like a freaking ping pong ball. You know, yeah, what's the newest yeah. drama today? And <laughs> then it hits over the net and the other side says, OK, we're going to hit this ball over here. And you are the ball. It's not a fun mm-hmm. place to be that we have so much fear right now. And fear is a contagious, awful, negative energy of lack, as we all know. So why do we put ourselves there? And oh my gosh, every app has it now. You know, I mean, it's just, you have to be scared of everything according to everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll probably go down that road when we get into oh, these questions. So yeah. one, and that's a great segue for what I want to talk to you about. Um, yeah. if you've got your new courses and Hello Soul is a beautiful book that everyone should read. <laughs> I think oh, why I wanted you. to bring you back on was because you have so much experience and wisdom in, you know, having transitioned to a spiritual entrepreneur and doing all yeah. the things that you do and, and doing it, I think, with a lot of grace and a lot of intelligence and, and all of the Thank things. You. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so sweet. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I, what I, what I'm hearing sort of in my ecosystem. And so I guess the podcast is always the intention is to support everybody in the collective is because there was just this boom, especially after the pandemic, where everyone was like, I'm going to coach, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Like it was a really awakening moment for people. Right. So, and that's wonderful, right? Like we want, we want people to be thinking outside of the box. We want them to be creative. We want them to get out of the, I would say like the, um, the sleepiness of the world that sort of tries to keep us fear, the fear, all of the things right Mm -hmm. now. There's a conundrum happening in the spiritual community of that. Everyone wants to charge you a million dollars to make a million (laughs) dollars. And so I want to talk to you. Yeah, I I have, I have been too. I mean, I've been, I've, I've just watched everything happen all the time. It's just wild. And so I think what I wanted to start with first is talking about like, if somebody's wanting to do this work, how can they first not get overly invested or involved in having to spend a lot of money to cultivate. Yeah. Yeah. So what what advice do you have? I fell for it. I did fall for it. I am. God, I remember um, everybody on my team was saying, okay, you, you've got to go with these guys. You've got to go with these guys. These, oh, and you're in, these guys have made this exercise person really rich. You've got to go for it. (laughs) And I talked to these guys and they sound like they have good ideas, right? And I was trying to sell a program. And so they're doing everything. They're my marketing. They're my message. And they're trying to, uh, it was actually, Krista, this is, this, is real, this is an important experience. Because mm-hmm. not only was it about the money, but it also knocked down my confidence in myself. 
and the confidence in my message. It took me quite a little while to get myself back to trust who I was when I did a video even. I mean, right. they, they really destroyed a lot in the process. It was not a joke. And guys, uh, for your, your audience, they've got to know you are your message. Where you are in your spiritual growth, that is your freaking message. <laughs> and you can't let other people tell you what it is. You can't let other people say, well, you know, people don't believe that right now. Well, yeah, but you're here to shine the light on what they're not talking about. That's mm -hmm. needed. That's what our job is. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we'd all be talking about how fearful we are, right? We'd follow with the norm. We are here to be the light into something different. Well, I signed up with these guys because everybody said they are the ones who are going to help you make money. And I had a small group. I was doing really well in my local area. And I was starting to spread out. But we all want that gold ring. We all want that success, right? Or we the easiest, that fastest. <laughs> that's our ego. And we all have it. We've guys it under. We've got to get this to millions, right? But it is an ego, guys. I hate to tell you. And it will make you fall over and over and over and over. And so I signed up with these guys and they were really expensive. And not only that, but then they started, and I also had someone on my team who just kept picking at everything I did. And yeah. meanwhile, I'm paying for them to promote this program. And so six months into it, a lot of money lost, a lot of freaking money lost. Then they say, well, you've got to come here and get taped because we can do a better job in the staging and everything. All right, we're trying that. Meanwhile, no sales. No sales. And they're telling me, oh, you've got this many new on your email list, but those new people aren't doing anything. Well, that's kind of strange right there, right? And then mm -hmm. one day I said, listen, I don't see this program getting sold. I, and he goes, well, you know, people pay up to a million dollars for a program. And it didn't click in my freaking mind. And I said, I'd never pay a million dollars for a program. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I am paying a million dollars for a program. I'm paying them, not me, mm -hmm. Do you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it clicked in my brain. I thought, oh, my God, they want me to keep going. They're not going to get a sale until they get to a million. That's right. what they're telling me. Listen That's to what hook. people say. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And I started to complain. And everybody was sold into this, guys. Everybody was saying, these guys are so good. Meanwhile, if you look back on my YouTube, you can always tell those videos. And most of the time, I am reading a script. And the script mm. tells you it's all a bunch of fluff. It doesn't right. tell you anything. It was bothering me. It was, it was hurting my consciousness. And, and I, I don't know. But anyway, when I started to rebel, and say, hey, we got a lot of money going out, guys, and I don't see it. Oh, you're, Lena, you're so worried about money. Well, not usually, but when I see it <laughs> flying off the shelves <laughs> and nothing's coming in, yeah. <laughs> I think that's called business. <laughs> Well, and even just having that like undefined return on an investment. And I think people go, people that are don't have business savvy education background, it's very easy for you to get taken off track depending on what the people are selling you. And it's, it is about the sale and it is super and you get compelling. Con. Yeah, and you get it is con. about the sale. Mm -hmm. And everybody out there wants the money before they perform. Right, right. And that's a bunch of bull too. And they all think they don't have responsibility in the sales process. But everybody from marketing down to your assistant has a, a, a duty to make this a successful business. Yeah. And, uh, and I subcontract a lot. And sometimes you run into that problem where they have other clients and they don't give you the attention you need. Right. And so, you know, what you have to remember, you are the one with the message. You are the one with the um, reason for being. Mm -hmm. And you are getting out there. You are the one that everyone is watching. You are the one that everyone wants to learn from. You're the product. You're everything. Mm -hmm. 
And who you are in this present moment is who you are. And you've got all the end in the, the brains and the know-how because you're guided by something higher, right? Yes. So everybody said I should only have a white board behind me. I thought, I've watched that. I thought that was boring as heck. <laughs> I like lights. I like that mystical feeling. I like my drums. I like, you know, that is me. That is, that's part of my that's your essence. That is my essence. Mm -hmm. And I'm bright like the lights. I'm not, I'm not white and pale and I'm white, but I'm not pale and I'm not uh, droopy. You know, I'm alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so why would I just have a white board? You know? Yeah. And I think also to, to the point of like, we all do have to make money. So like, we're not trying to say that you can't right. make money, no, you but I think it's, a you have to, we all have to support ourselves. And I think it's also about defining for yourself with integrity and conscious business practices about like, what does that actually look like? You know, I have programs where I don't have more than 10 people a year for the specific and express purpose to make it affordable and that I know I'm going to spend a lot of time with these people, but I had to, you know, sit down, crunch the numbers, figure out how, how do I make this a supportive tool in both directions? And I think sometimes they're like, or I see what I'm seeing right now. And I think it's, it's sort of the nature of capitalism taking over spiritual business that it's yeah. like, it's all about the money No, and it's, it's really not. not all about the money. No, <laughs> it's not. I mean, I really, I, I have my one-on-ones. I have um, people signing up for the Ascension, right? But right. it's really you not. You have like and a diversified program. I have, uh, yeah. you know, I have the study. Yeah. And, and every time I speak, I don't, I never, ever think about, oh, I have to make the sale. I <laughs> right. really, you know, when I speak, I always try to leave people with something, some tools to get going right away. And right. really, it's up to us. Uh, you know, spiritual people in history have not made a lot of money. Yeah, you've got <laughs> the Wayne Dyers. Um, I, it's really interesting. I just watched a documentary that's on now about soul soul meetings and stuff. It's it's on all the, the streams, Hulu and Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to watch it because I just get upset, but I decided to watch it. And I thought, why do these, I call them crooks, because they aren't teaching anything, and yet they get people signed up. Why do they get the people? Mm -hmm. And do you know what it is, folks? And this is what we get lost in every time. It is a very clear picture of what you give. Mm. And we as spiritual people don't think like that. You have to figure out what do I give? Me, I know I help you ascend. I mean, the spirit even told me, because I, I think I mentioned on another one of your podcasts, since I was seven, which is extremely young, I still don't mm -hmm. know why I started that. <laughs> but I because um, you had a lot of work to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had to learn right yeah I took these I was offered that that angel came or or a guide came to me and when I was a kid I thought it was an angel and said lost souls will come to you and you will bring them to the light and mm -hmm. from that point on our house was always haunted it drove my mom insane because, uh, you know, we have bands playing down in the basement and she'd be like, what mm -hmm. is this? And I said, Mom, I told you. And, he, and she didn't believe me. But whatever, it doesn't matter. And I've been doing that for years and years and years. And I have been uh, working more on the psychic level more and more and more and more. I teach now, the spirits tell me, it's time to bring the beautiful souls into the light that are here. And we are spirit within a body. It's time for us to see the light. Right. Because if we don't, we're going to die in fear, basically. Yeah. And I know ascension is what I teach. So why would I get waylaid on, on um, I don't know, some something yeah. else that's not ascension? Some really polished version of, of what that is supposed to look like. Yeah. I think the the other thing too that, and I'll be curious about what you think about this when, when somebody is trying to investigate what sort of support they need, because you're right, we are all here to help yeah. each other. And I think most of us come to 
programs, coaches, mentors with this, the idea of that we need support because maybe we don't know how to do everything. And I think that's such a beautiful and natural way to be supported, right? Like there's yeah. nothing wrong in that, but no. there's also something you said back there about, you know, when you're doing this work or you're, if you're trying to oversell, you're also going to attract people who are not ready to change. And all no. of us know who go on this journey that change, development, transformation, and growth, it requires an active participant. And then that, I feel like that, this is where I don't like it, where I feel like the ickiness is for me, is the ickiness is extracting from people who you know are not ready for the change. And then yeah. you've taken their money. Like for me, that's what makes me feel icky. Yeah. So what do you have to say about like coaches who are, yeah. you know, I think it's important to also be able to have that discern ship, right? When you meet with people and you're having your discovery calls or your one-on-ones just to check mm-hmm. where they are, like if they're not ready, maybe, you know, from an ethical and integra- integrity-based space, yeah. you might say, I don't think it's the right time for us to work together. Yeah. It is hard when you get someone who's not ready. And sometimes mm-hmm. they slip through, even though you've done all your screening. Yes. And, and all the spiritual but, screening. <laughs> yeah. And they get, mm. they get frustrated because they're not ready. I really do try to have um, a preview little 15 minutes with them. Mm-hmm. And I try, it's hard to get people to do that. I, I give a free program. I, I was going to give one on here. But I've decided, even with the free program, before you even do that now, I I need to talk to you for 15 minutes because I need to see where you're at. It's not a sales gimmick. And, and what uh, they don't understand is that if you get into like, they say, Oh, I can skip Ascension one and I can get into Ascension two and I'm ready for this, but they've got all this stuff in them. That is like these disbeliefs that they can even hear their soul. Right. Or they can't, or even their intuition to begin with. How do they think they can fit in there? And that's why you need to chat with them. And you mm-hmm. have to have a series of questions that you ask that you can hear. What what series of questions can you ask that'll give you a, peer, a really good picture of where they belong in your um, courses or in your whatever you have signed up or in your mm-hmm. books? Um, you need to do that. And And as you're dealing with the masses, it's your first program really needs to be geared towards the masses, meaning they're not going to be ready. Uh, So you're really starting. You got to, we're loaded. I mean, really more than, and I don't know. I hate to say I've never, I don't consciously know what it was like in the 1930s, but it seems like we are loaded with so many uh, boggling thoughts now. And Mm -hmm. we have attention spans that are so short now. Yes. We have, you know, and it takes having a longer attention span. So you really want to get down to what is, what, where they are at. You can't start talking about, oh, I can hear my intuition first thing. I know some people do. It never lasts, right? Because they got too yeah. much crap in their head to hold on to it. You need to deal with that first, right? So you want to get something for the masses that's a little bit easier. And you mm-hmm. do have to feel and like a, a stepping stone program yeah, where you would say like, yeah. this one isn't, yeah. you know, this is a little too advanced for you because yeah, we are shepherding people on the awakening We're path sh- and we are, con- yeah. we are constantly awakening and the veil does get thinner and thinner, but that does take time. It's, it's, it's pretty rare unless I think for most people, unless they've had a traumatic event or some life changing thing where it Something really bolts you up. into something wakes you up really dr- dramatically. Yeah. Most people is it's a, it's a slog sometimes. It is a slog. It is. And and because they haven't had the traumatic, right? So yeah, yeah it is. And and if nothing's wrong, you don't ask why too, you know, so you're very slow. To exactly. It. I mean, that's yeah. a, yeah, 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 that's, that's really. a whole other thing. So yeah. let's talk about the fear. So like, I love talking to you yeah. about this. And also I did want to mention to people, your other book, the prison effect, which I think oh, yeah. talks a lot about this, you know, breaking yeah. the blocks and, and just like the cultural fear around, I mean, I don't know where you want to take this, but I, I mean, there's the fear of like, if you're a spiritual entrepreneur, just the, the fear of scarcity and un- instability of even doing something on your own. Then there's like 
the fear of being spiritual that's still very, especially in our Western patriarchal uh, Christian nationalist yeah. world in the U.S. is very much like people are still very re- resistant to that. Um, and then there's just like the fear that we have growing up in our own ecosystems and everything we're carrying with us. So I know what, what can Does you that say about <laughs> you just you just go wherever wherever well, you feel called to talk about. I just mm-hmm. want to help people like be able to face the fear, you know, and yeah. and tame their nervous yeah. system so that they can have the courage to do this work. Yeah. You know, when I decided because I was doing self-improvement. You know, I was on that self-help thing and that's all right. You know, even when I wrote that book and um, what happened was uh, when I went through my divorce, I went to an intuitive psychologist. Mm -hmm. And so somebody who was also a very spiritual psychologist, you can't find them everywhere, but I had heard really good things about her and she saw all my gifts. I, I hid my spirituality in like this big giant blanket around myself. You didn't see it, but yet I knew everything. Everything was on the psychic level. I was not telling anybody anything. And, um, I was starting to even awaken to new things as I was talking to her, especially with what I was going through. That was my traumatic. It was a very long, awful, awful divorce that I learned a ton of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, especially about illusions. And when I looked at her and she said, you know, you're evolving. And I said, yeah, but I don't think I want to. Mm. I was scared. And she said, well, what are you scared of? And I said, I'm already strange. (laughs) I said, now I will lose all my friends because they're not in this place. And she got really quiet. And then she said, and I'll always remember this. I think it's the best advice I freaking got. She said, well, let's put it this way. Would you be happy not knowing what you're learning and just ignoring it and staying with your friends? Mm. That's really, so you're going to stop your own evolution. And I really had to think because that's what you're doing with your fear. And I thought, I don't want to, I want to evolve. And she said, okay, and you will lose friends. You will lose the old contacts, but new ones will come in. Mm. And that's what I have guided my whole spiritual journey on. Would I really be satisfied with myself if I let myself stay in this limited place? Or does my soul, my spirit within me, what it wants to evolve. Am I going to follow my soul or am I going to follow what people want me to be? And that's really what it comes down to in everything you do. And I've really guided my whole life that way now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And so fear is always something about conformity. It is something about, I'm not going to fit in. I'm not going to fit in with my old beliefs. I'm not going to fit in with um, the success that my father or mother had or whatever is expected of me. I'm I'm fear of failure because I'm going to, people will not look at me in the same way. Or I'm fear of not fitting in because everybody is so great and I have to fit in with them. I mean, the list, that is such an accurate list. (laughs) I know it really does. And, and so you really have to look at yourself and say, what is it that I'm afraid of? And yeah, if it's failure, okay. We're, we all kind of worry about that, right? We want success. And, and most of us, if we're on that spiritual path, we're definitely not the money Einsteins of the world, right? Because we're more <laughs> on the spiritual path. We're, we're, that's just energy. We know that. But the thing is, you have to look at that and say, yeah, but would I be really happy being a stockbroker or something? What, what, where am I supposed to fit in? What makes my heart sing? And yeah then follow that in its evolution. And if you're not making money, then, then you can come up with the strategies of just watch, watch what other people are doing. You know what I mean? Watch Mm -hmm. the ones that are making money, then add it to your spiritual practice. It's, it's, 
Yeah. Yeah. You have to deal with the demons in you. You are the only one that truly holds you back. And you were talking a lot about, you know, the teams and what do you really need if you don't feel sure. It is hard because you talk to somebody who's doing marketing, for instance, and they they're just killing it for this other person. And they're saying all their little programs that are going to help you. Um, I'll tell you the best I ever did was when I, and I'm going back to that, is when it was the assistant and me at a very small marketing firm or no marketing. And I was just myself. And it was a key message and out we went. I didn't have all the fancy tools. I did not have, we, you don't need it guys. You really, honest to God, don't need it. It's a lot of expense, a lot of money. Take it from somebody who, went that route, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need it. And everybody wants to have a piece of you, uh, money wise. They just, yeah. they don't care if you go poor. They really don't. No. <laughs> you have to be the one to say, you know, I can do this. And really what people want is authenticity. And mm -hmm. they want to know what you can do for them. And you've got to start to ascend where you trust. I really think if people are having a lot of fun, you know, fear, that's their head. That's their ego. And what you have to do is you have to ascend to where you're living with your soul. Then you don't fear it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's you. And, yeah. and you're, you're being guided by something bigger than yourself. And you don't, you just got to get out of your head, guys. Mm -hmm. And that, that false belief that you have to be, the next Wayne Dyer or something, you know, get yeah, it out. I mean, that's, of a, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I think it's, it's also too about just also taking, um, I, I want to say this because you do these reality checks that I just love on your Instagram, Thanks. but I think it's also about taking a practical and patient approach. And this might be my inner Buddhist talking. Yes. I think I see this a lot with people where, you know, you don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to God, no. sign up for all the programs or do, it's no. about it's about really taking a tempered and methodical approach that aligns with you. And I think to your point back there is most of us like number one, we can't avoid that calling because it keeps not it keeps knocking all the time. So yes. it's it's we can't. And then it's we're so hardwired for service. And I think what I want to hit home to the listening audience here is that like all we're trying to teach you in this moment is to align like your sincere soul's calling to uh to to be of service of people in a way that also supports you where you don't feel like burdened by it or like yeah. feel like like creating oh, extra God. busyness yes. around the bit to oh, build this is something. A, another topic. Yeah, <laughs> this is a big topic uh, topic because um yeah, oh God. Yes, we're spiritual, we shouldn't charge. <laughs> Yeah, we also have to live, right? And, and we have to live and eat and we dance. Have to eat, we have to pay our bills, right? And if you are, don't get caught up in that. I, this is what I learned. You know, I, I learned a lot with Bob Proctor, okay? And I know he was in self-development, but people don't know this. He was also extremely spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so I remember talking to him and he always says to people, give, 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 give. And then he turned to me and he said, don't give so much <laughs> <laughs> because what happens is um, we always think we can do everything free. And, and when we do that, well, then we end up broke mm -hmm. and we can't, we, we can't live that way. You have to, but there's even something more important that I've learned because I used to do a lot of free. I had, I had um, free chats with Elena and all this free, free, free. The people who took all the free, 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 never, never, no matter how cheap it was, would never graduate to anything else. Mm -hmm. There are, there, right now, there is this group of people that want everything free. And they only take the free. They will mm -hmm. watch only. They will watch YouTube and think they know everything. <laughs> yes, you, seriously. And they and they the, and spirituality. They only get to the basic part because that's what's free, and that's p 
peace of mind, maybe, you mm-hmm. know, for a day or so. Right. Mm-hmm. And they, they don't, they, they don't get it. They don't get it. And another thing is if people aren't willing to invest in themselves, then they're not going to do the, the work to evolve. They're not going to do the work to let go and evolve. Right. Cause yeah. you, letting go is the biggest thing in your awakening and they're not going to do it. They just won't. They want a fast pill. That's that's and, where we're at with this, uh, like the last couple generations and technology. I mean, everybody wants you, the fast, no fast and simple pill. answer, and there isn't. <laughs> no, you are finding your way home. Yeah, and that's what the whole spiritual journey is, and it and is it's a not process, linear, <laughs> and it's so not linear. And it's not, and it happens in spurts. It's not even, it's not even on time, right? So yes. it's when your soul is ready and your spirit is ready. And sometimes, and then you can get where, oh my God, another transformation. I can't handle it, right? <laughs> you can get to that too. <laughs> another rebirth. I, oh my God. I'm like, no, no more. Let me just stay at this plateau, please. <laughs> <laughs> Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? But but I'll tell you, it is, it is a constant growth. And when, and when you're working with people, you want people who are going to invest in that be, and have you as their mentor so you can offer the best. Plus, guys, think of it spiritually. Number one, there is this universal law that nobody freaking talks about. And it is the law of giving and receiving and becoming. The law of giving and receiving is incredible in important. It's not all you just give because all of a sudden there is an uneven energy and that uneven energy will create a lack. And then the vibration is broken. Do you understand? It has to be, it's a yin and a yang kind of thing. And both have to be working in this yin yang. You have to receive in order to give more because then you feel the gift of giving, you feel renewed, you feel um, reinvigorated, right? And Mm -hmm. they feel like I am getting, I am giving and I am receiving. And that is the whole thing. It is both sides have to feel the giving and receiving. Now, when you're doing something free all the time and they're always taking energy, you will find you get extremely tired plus you've got money problems, plus you've got things now weighing you down, but you created it because you created, you broke the law of receiving and giving. And And you created that equanimity. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's okay. (laughs) I was going to say in creating that equanimity of flow in yourself and in that work is so important. And I think a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs get taken off on the track of like, because there's these like prescribed formulas about giving. And I know even for myself, like I am a natural giver and I started noticing even in, in work, in my corporate life, uh, I would end up giving like, let's say 150% of like my physical energy, my mental energy. And I just didn't have the stamina to see it through six months, a year. And every time I would end up burnt out, I think the same, like that message you just said about the law of receiving and giving, it's so important because you're yeah. right that like there has to be a restoration of what's going out and coming in and it can't be overstated. Right. You can't, listen, there are a lot of things you can skim on. But when it comes to the universal laws, take a look at them. Because when you skim on them, you break the energy flow. And that's the energy flow with the universe. You break it. You put, I like to say you enter a new reality. And it's not such yeah. a fun reality. Uh, you know, and so it just is where do you want to live? I tend to want to live where there's ease and flow. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like ease and flow. I like, I love to give. And I I give a hundred more percent than I could ever give with people, but they have to be willing to show me that they are ready. And they show me by being ready, by being able to make an investment in themselves. And do Mm -hmm. I ask a lot? And am I one of those, you know, it can go overboard. There are people that ask like for, 
I don't know, incredible amounts of money. I do not ask for that. I ask for you to make an investment Mm -hmm. in yourself. And that's important. And it is time and it is monetary and it is you because Mm -hmm. you're the one that wants to grow, right? And you won't, yeah. you're looking for me to help you. And I will. I'm very capable. I know my stuff, right? So mm-hmm. why wouldn't I bring that forward? And then everybody is happy. And everybody is getting the energy. And it can go mm-hmm. on for as long as they want. You know? Yeah. And I also think that it's like a beautiful new paradigm that we're all mm-hmm. striving for. And the current and old paradigm doesn't like it because it it no. doesn't it doesn't reward the top percent, you know. And so, like, no. you know, I want people to come away from this conversation knowing that we we want everyone to head in this direction because it is where we will see fiscal and economic and um, status equality and equity with each other. If more of us go down this new paradigm, like there is so much opportunity here I think you know the point that I want to make and what I'm trying to help people with is like making sure that we do it with integrity and consciousness and in a way that supports the collective because that's what we want to do um and that's that's what we're here for and I so I want us to be able to move into this new paradigm without the fear without the judgment without the capitalism and the like it's almost like there's like a whip in people's back to like do this, that, and the other to get your business started. Well, we've like, had that. That's, Haven't yeah. we had that forever? We've, we've tried it. <laughs> it. It didn't work. No. And it's not working. And I know that there is, um, well, let's face it. There is that energy out there that wants to keep that. They want right. to keep the workers one way and the success another. And we've got you know, COVID changed everything. And there are more people that are, and I just moved South. Okay. Not that everybody needs to move South, but I, I am pretty much a Northerner. I mean, Mm. I have been North my whole entire life. And so, and I was extreme Northeast. You know, I mean, I grew up that way. So there, there you go. And I'll tell you, since I moved South, I'm seeing a different way mm-hmm. and I love it. It's, it's working to live, not live to work. And we hear that phrase in the North, but we don't know what it means. And, yeah. But it's really big down here. And it's what it is, it's more of a value of life, the quality of life. And the quality of life is not accumulating more and more. It is enjoying what you have and the people around you and the the environment around you and just and the nature i mean just everything comes alive when you work to live mm-hmm. and like you'll call somebody to come do some work and they'll say oh no i'm filled this month and you can offer them double but no i'm sorry Mm -hmm. And they, because they want to be with their kids, they want to be doing rock climbing, they want to do, they want, they've got enough to survive on, I'm going to live. We have to understand that that's not a bad way, guys. Mm -hmm. We don't have to live in a million dollar home. How much is too much? You know, and you can't take any of it with you when you die. Oh, gosh, no. And you really don't You'd be surprised how much. It, I mean, I've just settled two estates or I'm trying to settle mm-hmm. another. It goes so fast. I mean, yeah, it just stuff does not. Once you pass, your stuff is not here. It's mm-hmm. this is not real. Nothing is real. I know. You this know is all that. an illusion. This is all an illusion. And and so why? Why do we want to feed the illusion? Why don't we want to bring people to a better place that is not an illusion, right? And yeah. I think we just need to understand we have to play with the energies. We have to know ourselves. We have to trust ourselves. We don't have to grab the brass ring every two minutes, but we do have to value what we teach. Yes. We have to know in ourselves that we're bringing these people to a better place. If we're not, then then you're not doing it right, right? If we're mm-hmm. bringing them to a better place and they start to awaken, they find their gifts inside, they find whatever, their, their psychic gifts, their, their whatever, their ascending, whatever it is, and we're getting money to live on and can be happy, 
Well, then what more do you want? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's very incongruent of like just having the capitalistic energy in it. And I also just think that with the new paradigm shift, you raised such a good point is that I think people after COVID really, really had just like this moment where they realized, you know, we cannot just continue to work like this. You know, I, no, people I, wanted, no, but, people had freedom like that they never trying. had before. Yep. <laughs> and so and like they're trying to get it back, you know, they're trying they so are. hard. That's what this, all this economy has been trying to do is get more workers into a place where they have to work. And I, I'm really against it. Um, I think we, we as spiritual people are kind of, um, we're out of that realm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And if we're entrepreneurs in that, we're in a different place mm -hmm. from that. And most of all, if you've been a worker versus an entrepreneur from, you know, if you lost your job in COVID and you're trying to become an entrepreneur, that's where you fall into the either the giving or the capitalist. Right. I've got to make lots of money like um Elon Musk or whatever, right? Yeah. I've got to yeah, I've got to be this big person and or I want to be an influencer or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the I have to be the top of whatever. And it's really I don't know. I mean, I don't want to knock that if you want it, but but I think you, you've got to figure out your gifts and just do the gifts that you best can do and, and feel like you've got, you've got the energy going and, and the energy going of giving. And then that will feed you. Find out what your gifts are. Like, mm -hmm. are you good on camera? Are you good with written word? Are you good with this? Find out how you can communicate the best. Don't let anybody tell you different and use that that is what is going to bring you the success because that's what people will want. And I don't know, just don't get lost on the other, the, the shiny bobble because everybody will offer you. Do you know how many offers I get a day? I'm sure it's no more than you. I mean, easily I get six offers a day for me to come sign up with this program or sign up with this and I'll fill you with all these clients. And they don't even have the clients to tell you that they can sign you up for all the clients that you will. Uh, I will get you marketing in such a way. Yeah. Well, you know, you get a ton of that. I'm, and I'm flooded with those. Like if you have a show or if you have just even minimal success anywhere online or in business, it's like people are just wanting to extract and like find a way to like repurpose your resources so that they can make money. And you have to be really discerning mm -hmm. and discriminating about which ones do you actually collaborate, do, and all like exactly. it is, it's so tricky sometimes. It's very tricky. I do believe if you are starting out, having a good person who is your assistant that knows technology, mm -hmm. that knows how to be really efficient in helping you, and they are your right hand person. I mean, I'm going to mm -hmm. talk to logistics here. You got to get that. You do have to have a website because that's your calling card. Don't yes. spend a fortune on the freaking website. Because number one, you, you, it's got to have an offer. It's got to have something free. It's got to tell what you do, right? It doesn't need all the flags and everything else. If you got testimonials, fantastic. If you've got um, an interview with, with you, then that's fantastic. All of that's really important. But then it's up to you. And if you've got a show, yeah, that's you. Everything is you. But you've got to mm -hmm. have the basics just to make sure that People have a place to go to buy your products, right? Or your courses. Other than that, it, it, it's you. You don't I need I love someone. that you keep coming back to that. <laughs> it's you. I know. Because that's you're your product. Mm -hmm. and, and if you let people alter you too much, you lose the specialness of you. Mm -hmm. And most people and we don't do all under, have gifts. They, they, yeah, you have gifts that they don't even understand. They try to water it down. And as soon as they water it down to make it markable, you don't have it anymore. You're like yeah. everybody else because you're dealing with somebody on the mundane level to get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Most marketing people aren't where I am. So that's why they were trying to water down my message 
because they didn't understand it. Yeah. They didn't understand what attention is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think to the point of like that, we all have gifts and like really the genuous, the genuineness and the sincerity of the message that you're sending is yeah. you. And I think I always use this example to tell people because people are always like, but so and so's doing it better and blah, blah, blah. But it's like if you've gone on a- any journey, development, spiritual healing, whatever, you know, there are books that you'll read, there are, are conversations you will have, and it won't click until one certain person who says it in a very specific way. And I think yeah. that's a, a clear example of how each one of us has a unique communication pattern, a unique ability to connect with people, a unique gift. And it's about not being afraid to also see that gift within ourselves so that then we can give it to to the world. It's also your personality. And if you allow people to manipulate your personality, because, well, two of us could teach the same thing. You're going to find that in everything. And, And people will go to you because of I don't know, your smile. Some I've had people say, believe it or not, oh, I'm coming to you because of your laugh. Mm. Well, okay. <laughs> I love your laugh. <laughs> well, I, I know people love the laugh. But the, they say the laugh, but what they really mean is the freedom to laugh. Mm. You know, the freedom to just see life in that humorous way and not worry that everybody's going to think you're nuts or whatever. You know what I mean? Or just to feel that abandonment that you can just be yourself and laugh. That's what they're really saying. But yeah, so they'll choose me over that person or the other person who's really solemn and everything. They like that. You don't know. And that's not your job to know. Your job is just to be you. The person, your, your audience will find you. Mm -hmm. If you are authentic, if you are true to yourself, if you are, you know, on your message, they'll find you, they'll find you. And, you know, and if you really want it big, sure, go after the brass. But I'll tell you, it's a, it's a weird road and it's very manipulative. And after the time you're done, sometimes you're not even who you were before. Yeah. And if that's what you want to play, go for it. But I don't know. I think, I think we all have gifts and, and I think it's, it's important that we are all on this level that we are helping those that want to come to us, but we have to make ourselves seen, but authentically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it there because we're almost at the hour here, but I think we gave people a lot to think about and to also just feel, yeah. And I just wanted to also, because I know a lot of people are feeling disillusioned and like frustrated by this, like, you know, pay me a million, make a million that is circulating in the, in the spiritual industry right now. And I, I just really wanted to like normalize that there, there are practical steps that we need to take, you know, maybe, maybe you don't do everything super fast or buy all the Mm -hmm. programs. And I really appreciate you coming back throughout the interview and reminding people that, you know, if they feel called to do this work, it's about that calling and locking into their own self. That's, that's what I think, you know, we're here to do. So that's I really appreciate really what you it's about. Yeah. doing that. Yeah. Wow. I thank you for having me on. I want you on mystical muse <laughs> so you can talk about your cool spiritual <laughs> life and, the, and your journey. So yeah, that would be so wonderful, but I thank well, you. I hope it helps yeah. someone. Have people check out elenachapman.com if they're interested. If they're interested, I do have um, uh, a free consultation with me, 15 minutes, and then a free little program that will help you just breathe. I know you're all spiritual, but I also know that sometimes in all our giving, we lose our own freaking breathing. So I have different, I've studied all these incredible ways and that getting that sweet spot in that meditation and i'm showing it in like i think it's five or six it's called seven day reset and that's a free program that i will i'm giving out but the most important thing is the 15 minute conversation and if if it's business they want to talk about or whatever i'm open so (laughs) beautiful well thank you so much for coming back and doing this with me i really appreciate you and i i always end in gratitude as you know so i just want to have you tell us three things you're grateful for in this moment Well, number one, I feel very grateful to see you again and talk with you because it's always so much fun. 
And I have to say, I am very grateful for my life and where I live now and the peace I have. And I'm also very, very grateful for all the love I have around me mm. every day. I so, love that. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Alina, for being on the show. I deeply, deeply appreciate you. <laughs> ah, same here. Same here. This podcast was written, directed, and produced by me, your host, Chris Ziomara, in alignment with light casting. Music curated and created by Mr. Pixie. You can find I'm Awake Now What on all social media channels by searching IANW Podcast. Head over to your favorite podcast app and subscribe, download, rate, and review. Come back every Sunday to partake in a new and enlightening conversation. May you be filled with love and light until we meet again.